uh, on what is assurance, right? So assurance is um, the part inside of DNA center that is consuming telemetry from multiple sources within your network, correlating all of that uh, information that is coming in, processing, you know, digesting all those sources of telemetry to bring it into an easy to use uh, user, graphical user interface, which that is not just about the network devices, but the clients that are connected to that network out of every switchboard or um, or on wired or, or over the wireless over the air. Uh, and then not just that, but also being new um, application insights, the applications that are traversing these devices, baselining all of that for us, making it easier, uh, easier for us to correlate and turn those insights into you know, wisdom that can take us to understanding how a network is operating when, and whether or not uh, actions need to be taken. Now, we don't stop right there. We don't just tell you where the issues are. Right, or where, where the issue is, we we don't stop we don't stop right there because uh, that's not enough anymore. Uh, we go and we provide guided remediation. So if there is an issue that is discovered under assurance. Um, normally, there there's a, a lot of them that tag along a process that is easy to run right on assurance to get to the potential uh, possible cost. So yeah, uh, that's pretty good as well. Now let's. Go ahead and talk about the prerequisites to get uh, assurance running to the level that you want it to run, right? And, and this is going to be the first half of today. If you look at this slide right here, that should be, in a nutshell, the agenda for the first half of this morning. Uh, we're not going to talk about installing DNA Center because we know you already have DNA installed. We're just going to touch base really quick on how it is necessary to create a, a site hierarchy with areas, buildings, and floor, and we'll cover that. And then adding credentials for that site hierarchy. And then with that, we can proceed to discover our network. And we normally do that through a discovery process. There's more than way, more ways to do it, but normally discovery is the fastest and the easiest one. Now on the background, as you run your discovery, if you have the right controllability enabled, and we will explain what the right controllability is today, uh, there's a lot of processes happening on the background for you automatically that you don't have to worry about, uh, like propagate, um, populating your inventory. And, and all, this, all this left after your inventory populated is to assign those devices to the sites that we created at the, um, at the network hierarchy. With that, uh, I think there's one, one step here that is missing is um, to enable network telemetry, and, and then that, at that point you are full on Assurance, but we will cover that on today's uh, session. Any questions so far on uh, what what the agenda is for today? Tim? No, you feel free to keep going. All right, all right. I will be throwing uh, every now and then just to make sure that you know that we're running, that we're running at the right speed. All right, so we're going to start with site hierarchy. So. Uh, site hierarchy is divided into areas, buildings, and floors, right? And I'm going to start with areas. Areas is where you have most of the flexibility, right? This is um, a, a pretty much up to the uh, architect to design and how I want to break my uh, network or the network I'm responsible for into smaller uh, pieces. Uh, one set of examples could be you could you could have um, you know, your in New South Wales, at least we, we usually talk about the east and the west, and and that could be one one set. Uh, one area could be New South Wales, and then under New South Wales, you can have the west area and the east area, and inside you know inside the east, and you can even even further subdivide that into other areas. So areas are pretty flexible, and 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 they give you that that opportunity. Um, there is one global area there by default. You cannot delete that one. Everything falls under that global area, but anything under global area is pretty flexible in terms of area. Buildings, on the other hand, buildings are um, well, a no-brainer because they they require a physical location, uh, and 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 they meant to be used um, using just a physical address where the devices are located. Now, of course, uh, if you have a big campus, right? Uh, and, and it's one address for the whole campus. Another easy way for us to 
uh, provide buildings or enter buildings is by uh, latitude and longitude, so basically geolocation. Uh, and, and that, if you have a big campus, that might be another good way to take, you know, separate one building from the other. The name of the building is, is again, up to you, whatever makes sense is, is in your case, that, that's what we want to uh, put in there. But in terms of uh, the, the address, that, that uh, we definitely need that to put it on the map. And, and you want it on the map because you want it easy to consume, right? You want it easy for the operator to understand where something is happening if DNA has to alert you in any way that something is happening. And then floors. Well, floors are just how we break down buildings. We have, we might have a building with one, two, three, you know, ten floors. You can add the floors to the building, and of course, inside of each one of those floors, you can uh, later come in and say, you know, this floor one got switch one, and you know, floor two maybe got switch two, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. Uh, another tip for floors: uh, sometimes if you, you know, we're trying to group our network into blocks that have common settings, right? If it's an area, normally all the buildings in that area have common network settings, common DNS, DHCP, AAA, uh, config, just settings that are common, right? Of course, you can overwrite the parent area settings into the child area settings and down to the building area settings and then the, the floor area settings. You can, you can do that. But the idea is to try to keep it as consistent as you can and, and, and to try to keep uh, settings um, that make sense for that particular building block uh, in, inside of a specific building block. Now, when we come to floors, sometimes we have two departments in the same floor and we manage them differently. So uh, I've seen people use like floor one, east wing, and maybe that's where we have our marketing department and um, maybe floors. West Wing, and that's where we have our front desk or reception or whatever. Uh, but uh, they have, uh, that's another way to get creative on floors to say, you know, floor one east and floor one west. That, that would be another way to um, creatively use your floors. With that being said, we're going to move over to credentials. Now, once you have your hierarchy um, created on DNA, then we can start specifying at a global level the credentials that the DNA needs to be able to log in into the devices uh, and do what it needs to do, right? And, and the key here are your uh, CLI credentials that DNA needs. You're using them in password to log in, and of course, they enable password. Uh, we do require that that username and password have a privilege level of 15, so, you know, full privilege on DNA. And then SNMP uh, is a requirement as well. Uh, for DNA to operate. HTTP is pretty much uh, an optional, uh, but, you know, feel free to add it. The cool thing is uh, if you do add HTTPS, um, well, DNA is going to use it on the devices that support it. You don't need to worry about having to enable it for one device or the other and having to worry about, okay, does this device support it or, or not? DNA will take care of all that heavy lifting for you. Again, we specify them at a global container. And then uh, all of the sites, all of the areas that you create under global, the buildings and the floors, will inherit them from global. But if you need more specific on uh, area by area or building by building or floor by floor basis, you can go down to that level on the hierarchy and overwrite the global um, defined user credentials that were inherited. And that's a pretty easy one uh, to do. We'll probably run through that. So now let's go ahead and stop the slide here and straight into the demo. Uh, Mikey, handing it over back to you. All right, thank you. Just give me a second. Let me show you my desktop. All right. Um, can you guys see my um, sharing so far? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, thanks, Isvon. So uh, this is the um, DNA in our lab demo system. So you can see that's the first page when we log in to the DNA center, uh, basically give you uh, the overall for the health system. We'll talk in that one a little bit later um, after the uh, ESPOM um, finishes the slides. Um, so uh, uh, basically, as we're talking about network hierarchy, which is uh, we're talking about uh, design portions of the Cisco DNA center. 
So out of the design portion, uh, there was called network hierarchy in here. So um, you can see, but default is will will be have a global only. So this is um, uh, areas which is we created for um, uh, our self play around and also the other demo. Uh, this is called um, Australian. On Australian, um, we can create in our areas we buy click these gears. Um, so to uh, add areas, um, probably we can. Um, Give the name, say, uh, Melbourne. And then, um, and then we can add it. So we can see um, this is the uh, areas is coming on. Uh, out of the Australian, there's big areas. Then we have a Melbourne. So under Melbourne, uh, as we're talking about this hierarchy, you can add a, in other areas, or we can go add a buildings. Um, I'll just pick up. Um, or anyone give me the address, um, say, um, um, is in here. So um, the other ones, uh, let me um, talking about is um, um, those uh, credentials, right? Um, so this is the credentials, um, actually, because I click the Melbourne. So by default, all the credentials we add into the, um, a global level. Uh, which you can see we have a COI, um, which we have uh, SNMP credentials. Uh, for SNMP, a little bit tricky is uh, before they go to the SNMP version 2 C read, uh, we, we do recommend that we have a write as well, but you have to click here to add the write um, uh, credentials as well. And SNMP version 3, if we're using uh, in our environment, so for the Cisco DNA Center to um, access those devices. Um, again, this HTTPS credentials is uh, optional. Um, you can choose in here, and then um, and after that, um, we can save it. Um, uh, what I can do is, if you guys want to, probably um, can say demo, and then we can say username, demo, then password, demo one two three four. Can see that, yeah, and then we can say, here we go. We got this one in here. Uh, one one thing is, if we move to the areas we just created, so you can see uh, this is small like um, inherit icons here. So basically, uh, the credential created under the global level will be inherited by the areas. Um, so you can see these icons coming here as well. Um, you see, but before they click, uh, they leave whatever I click like SNM, SNMP version 3 before. If you see all the others, it has to be here. So all the icons in here, same as um, same as on the buildings. Uh, but for typically discovery sessions, if you know what is the CI you have to use or choose, you can um, you can highlight the one you want, and then they will. They will override whatever um, you have to use on this global. But when you're adding um, those credentials, it has to be in the global level. So I can I can save it. Yeah, that's um that's that's pretty much for the hierarchy. I'm not sure if I have anything to add on for those things, or do you guys have any questions so far? Any questions okay. yet? Yep. All right. Okay. Do we know how to overwrite them at a building floor level? Just just go down to that portion of the hierarchy and uh, select the one you want for that specific building, like Mikey just did, and save on the bottom right hand corner. You got that save yeah. button there, and then you can yeah. see the 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 inherited the icon gone. goes away. Yeah. yeah. All right then, Mikey. I guess that that one's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and and move on to. The next, the next topic to get us to assurance. Sure. Send it back. Go ahead and to the control again. Yep. All right. So we said uh, we're going to continue on that workflow we saw before. We we touch base on hierarchy. We touch base on credentials. Now the next thing is uh, network discovery. All right. So we said uh, network discovery is what we normally would use to allow the the DNA center to begin. Managing devices, right? 
and and it's a really easy to use feature. It's gonna go. It's gonna scan your network. Um, we're gonna see how it does it and, and what parameters are used to control what it scans and what it doesn't. Uh, but as it scans your network, it populates the inventory automatically, right? And um, if by any means uh, you get to the discovery um, screen and you 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 know you forgot to add the the, the device credentials that you needed for that particular discovery, uh, we have another chance to add them during the discovery process. We can add at least one additional that is only relevant. Uh, for the discovery process during the discovery um, a screen itself. So, yeah, that, that's uh, really, really uh, flexible right there. Now, what is, what is required? Well, this is, this is a must, right? This is not optional. If you have issues with discovery, it's because probably we missed one of these two. Uh, number one, we, we talk about SSH credentials. Um, and, of course, we also support Telnet. We never promote Telnet. We only promote uh, SSH but the Telnet option is always there. Um, so if you want to go with SSA, hopefully, um, that will be the case. The username and password must have adapt to village 15 or, or, or full access to um, read and write on the CLI. And then, of course, SNNP as well. So um, with that, let's start digging into the op methods that we have for discovery. There is, there is a, a CDP and LDP are pretty much uh, a very similar method where you choose a seed device, you give a DNA and IP address, and that's what we're going to what we're going to call the seed device. DNA is going to try to SSH to that IP address, and then from there, any CDP or LLDP neighbor based on the one that you choose, uh, DNA is going to find all the neighbors that it has, and then it's going to try to discover those devices as well by trying to log in. It's going to also check those devices. CDP neighbors in turn, and it's going to continue for as many iterations as you choose it to go up to 16. Um, and then the, by far the most popular, uh, one of the ones that I, I see you got more, more control of is uh, the IP uh, address range, which you just specify which IP range you want DNA to scan and discover devices. Usually we keep our look back um, uh, you know, maybe we, we use those uh, look back as slash 32s for management, but we usually carve them out of a slash 24 range so you can discover your slash 24 range and bring all those devices in uh, to DNA by using the look back IP address. It's pretty, pretty easy to use. Um, other than that, uh, I think we can go into the details. We talked about how the credentials that you had to find previously on your hierarchy get out of populated, and you can choose to use them or you know, toggle them off for a particular discovery, or you can also add uh, your credentials. Uh, we're going to see the screens on the demos, but I think it's better to cover it there, but you can add credentials on the fly during a discovery if, if you don't want to use some of the ones that are already there populated uh, from the, the previous step. Um, if, you're, if you're thinking, well, if I have five credentials, which one is DNA going to use? to log in into a device or to attempt to SSH, the answer is uh, DNA is going to go and try the first one, and then we'll try the second one, and so on and so forth. Uh, why this is relevant, it's mostly relevant if you have, say, 10 credentials, because, you know, if, if you, the credential that is going to work is credential number 10, then the discovery is going to take a little bit longer, right, because DNA is going to do this on every device that it tries to connect. It's going to go through every one of those credentials that you have enabled, until they find the right one. Now, if you're thinking, okay, well, how does DNA remember from there on which one to use to connect to a device? No heavy lifting required, no need to click or worry at, at all for any one of that, because the DNA will remember that on the back. So pretty, pretty easy uh, to, to use. Now, oh, another thing that why this is relevant is if you, in case you have like a maximum logging attempts on line BTY for SSH, uh, of course, if the one that is going to work is number 10, maybe if you have a max of five, when DNA has tried the first five, it's probably going to get blocked from trying the number six uh, attempt, and, and maybe the credentials that work for that device are number 10. But, you know, you, you re I've rarely seen people trying 10 different credentials on a discovery, but, you know, it's something to keep top of mind, right? 
uh, if you have that on, on the device that uh, you're trying to discover. Uh, what ports are required? What ports are required for a discovery to work? Um, I see, and this is regardless of CDP or LODP or um, range or, or IMP uh, range or IP range, I'm sorry. Uh, these are the ports that you need to make sure that are available and open between DNA and the devices that you're trying to discover. So ICMP, echo and echo reply, echo request and echo reply, uh, SSH, of course. Uh, if you're using Telnet, well, of course, Telnet, uh, hopefully we, we again um, just, just use SSH. Sorry about that. Uh, SNMP, SNMP is, is going to be something that is going to be tested, and if SNMP is not open between DNA and the Discover device as much as we can SSH, the discovery will fail. Uh, Syslog is another one you want to make sure that it's open, and NetFlow. NetFlow is only if you need it. And if you say you want to use NetFlow and the device does not support it, don't worry, DNAC will not, will not be using NetFlow. DNAC will only use NetFlow for the device that supports it. Again, you don't need to worry about whether or not the device supports it. You can just define it, and DNA will do the hard work. Minimum, minimum for it to work, SSH and SNMP, read only, minimum. Uh, if the read only is 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 uh, the only thing that works, DNA will try to push the the the, read, uh, the write community as it discovers the devices. Um, yeah, there's there is a full list of all the the ports that are required on a device by device basis on your uh, release notes and your installation guide. That's some more detailed, uh, you know port by port basis and device by device basis of, of all the ports that DNA needs to operate. Uh, but uh, but these, are, these are the ones that are needed for a discovery to take place. With that being said, I'm gonna stop right here. Um, yeah, let us, start, let us start this demos again. So this is a login page again. Um, I just want to show you where we find our discoveries um, when you log in the Cisco DNA Center first. So there's two ways. One, we see these cube buttons. Uh, we can click that. We can see the discovery tools on the top. The other way is we always scroll down. Uh, there's tools um, and panels in here. You can click it. You can find the discovery. So let's go this one first. So um, our task is we need to add a new discovery wild case. So we just give the name, uh, probably say um, demo. Um, and then, as this one was introduced on the slide, uh, for the discovery, we have a, a few types we can choose, CDP, um, IP address range, and LLDP. Um, for this typical environment, we use the IP address. So, as, um, as we say, we can choose IP from. Uh, for my cases, um, I will, I will discover um, devices in our environment. But if you do have some, um, sorry, is one you want to say something? Yeah, yep. I, I was going to ask you if you have those devices already in inventory, or maybe we can show uh, the inventory no, to show that they are not there, and then and then run it so that they can see the devices populated. Oh, okay, that's a good point. Pretty cool um, to see. Yep. So in the inventory, which is in Gobo, uh, this is the currently all the devices we're listing here in our environment. Um, we will see three more devices when, once we finish our discovery. Um, so you will see the three more devices list in the middle. So um, I'll let you know, basically, this is the IP. So we're missing the IP 10.0.0.527, um, which is that three devices there. Let me go back to my discovery. I didn't save, have I? Yep. That's fine. So, zero one. Good point, man. We can always go back and use the save discovery. So, as you run it, it gets saved yep. on the on the left hand side, and you can come back and reuse it if you ever have to. Yep, that's fine. So go to the seven. I'll try to say that. So, uh, if in any cases um, we we want to discover a certain range, but it's not continue. Uh, continually with the IP subnet, we can add uh, typically range over there. So example, probably can do 10.10.0.525 for my example. 
and then I'll do six and the seven here. Um, the other typically things in here prefer the management IP address. Uh, we recommend to you to use the lookback um, IP address based on the Cisco or DNA Center's discovery. Um, that's uh, that's lookback is uh, is best has reachability to the uh, Cisco DNA Center's IP as well by routing purpose. The other thing is under the credential, if we don't have a choose, so this is uh, this is all the CLI um, SSH credentials we have on the globally. Um, you can choose which one you want to see an example. We have the demo, but for this typically discovery task, we don't want to use these. We don't want to use these. We can cross them. So it means they only use the first two to, to try to discover devices. Same as SNMP version two and version three. Let me leave this on. Uh, the other one is, say, uh, if some credentials we just realize we, we want to add when we're doing the discovery, we don't need to call back. What we can do is we can add credentials in here, uh, which list all like um, CLI, SSH credentials, uh, SNMP version 2.3, um, HTTPS, NetConf, all the stuff. Uh, you just need to give the name, say, uh, discovery um, example um, credentials. And then I'll give the username, say, discovery, probably, uh, discovery, disco sorry, discovery, then uh, there's a check button. If this credential you only want to use for this typically task, you just click the save straight away. But if you say this will be become to one of my global settings, which is that hierarchy when we create it, you can choose, say, I'll just check this button. So they will save as global uh, credentials. You can reuse them for whatever the uh, future task or you have to uh, you have to use for the typically site. So um, let me don't save that one probably. I will just save as here. And then you can say is uh, successful. And then we get a one more credentials here. Uh, I know this device doesn't use this one, but we can we can try. And then um, that's pretty much that. Close this. Um, before I hit this, I can hit the discovery, but I will hand back to the response um, to explain that. Yeah, or sorry, anything else. sorry, Mike. I know I know I know you don't want to show this because you never want to show it. But let let let's let's be fair. Go all the way down the bottom, and we'll show them how to enable telnet for the discovery. Again, guys, I'm going to show you what. You know, by all means, always use as always use oh, as okay. safe as possible. So if you have that, when Mikey was showing us on their advance, you can pick Telnet if you want Telnet, and you can also flip it, uh, you can also switch it so that the Telnet is attempted before SSH is. But again, you know, you're going to get a warning, and we're just not recommending that you use Telnet. It's uh, and this time in age, Telnet is probably a no-go for for everybody, right? But it's available. Just 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 wanted to bring that up. Yeah. So yeah, Mike, typically, I guess I guess we have. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, typically in all environments, we don't have a telnet enabled. So yeah. Yeah. So I guess I guess we have that big flag at the bottom, Mike, about device controllability. That's, I thought yeah. maybe I will cover that. If if there are no more questions, guys, here I'm ready to go into device controllability. But I want to you know give us a minute uh, to open the room for any questions so far. I'm okay with discovery because I've um, done it before. Um, yeah, it's not it's not that difficult. The, the discovery phase. Um, what I what I, uh, I I do have a question. Um, it's afterwards with the. I'll I'll get back to you though. It's about um, when you've discovered a device and um, uh, it, I think it. Has something to do with the credentials, updating the credentials on a device that's already discovered. Well, we're about to see all the configuration that gets pushed when the device controllability is enabled. So maybe that will answer part of that question. But please feel free to uh, interrupt me as I go through it, and and we can clarify on any detail. Mike, I'm going to take over then, and let go ahead yep. and and jump straight into device controllability. All right, guys, because you saw that flag there at the bottom of the discovery screen. DNA does tell you every time you discover a device whether the device controllability is enabled or not. 
All right, so that's the good news. You don't have to remember this much DNA to let you know. But you do want to know what the rest controllability is all about, right? The default is that it is enabled. And what it does, what it enables is for DNA to manage the device, right? So we do require the rest controllability enabled when you discover devices for that device to become managed by DNA. Uh, basically, if uh, for some reason, uh, you know, we, we got it, uh, we're providing an SNMP credentials, but the device, when DNA logs in, does not have those SNMP credentials that we provided, uh, DNA will push them. Uh, this is good, especially if you're trying to migrate away from SNMP version through, uh, 2 to SNMP version, through, uh, version 3. Uh, everybody prefers SNMP version 3 because it's a secure version of SNMP, SNMP anyway, but, you know, doing that across the board, uh, it's a big project to log in into every device the way we used to do things uh, to push that on every single device. Well, DNA can push your SNMP version 3 credentials as part of this discovery if you prefer to, uh, if you do provide those SNMP version 3 credentials. Uh, and then if you provide both, SNMP version 3 credentials are favored. For NetConf, we already told you, if it's supported, DNA configures it. If it's not supported, no worries. And, and if you're wondering which devices will support it, uh, mostly devices running Polaris images of uh, 16.5 or higher. So yeah, uh, you do have the button there to disable it. But if you disable it, you're going to populate your inventory uh, with unmanaged devices, devices that will not give you the assurance that you want. And we're, right now, what we're talking is how to get you to assurance. Let, let, let's not lose focus. We're talking about discovery, but the idea is the end goal is to get you to devices uh, with full visibility on assurance. Now, let's talk about what gets pushed, because this is the question that I always get from everybody. I want to know what is DNA pushing to my devices during the discovery, right? I told you there's a lot of things happening on the background during the discovery. We, talk, we talked about the inventory being populated, and we're going to show that back when we get uh, from the discovery that my key is running on the back. And, and, it, and it, the answer is it really depends on what device uh, DNA is discovering, right? So for wireless LAN controllers, uh, and this is actually across any type of device, one of the things that DNA is going to do as it discovers devices is to push a certificate to secure the connectivity between DNA and that device from there on, right? So all communications uh, are secured during the discovery, and from there on, all communications between DNA and your devices are secured by one of the most secure options to manage devices remotely, which is using certificates for authentication. Uh, good news for you, this is not removing certificates that you have. This is adding other trust points, and, and you can have multiple trust points on other device. So we were not deleting the ones that you already have there, right? We're just pushing the one that DNA you need, needs to talk to that device. Uh, the other thing uh, that DNA is going to push for wireless LAN controllers is it's going to push itself. So this IP that you see up here on the right-hand side server URL, DNA is letting the wireless LAN controller understand that it is going to become the network assurance server for that wireless LAN controller from there on. As part of the discovery, uh, DNA sets itself and it starts a streaming telemetry. So one thing to take away out of this slide is that, well, while the default for network telemetry, and this is why people usually don't get the amount of detail that they want in assurance from their infrastructure, the default setting is uh, disable telemetry. So you can discover your devices, and at the end of that, they are managed, but uh, the telemetry is disabled. Uh, for wireless LAN controllers, that's the only exception, right? So, so that is true that disable settings for routers and switches and access points, but for wireless LAN controllers, um, well, for wireless LAN controllers, the default is that telemetry is enabled, and what you got in front of you is, is, a, is a strong proof of that. Um, this is what will happen if you are uh, connected on the CLI of a wireless LAN controller and you enable, uh, you enable debug AAA TACX just to see, uh, you know, pop up on the, on the command line what is being executed by any user on the back. Uh, this is what you would see as DNA discovers a wireless LAN controller. You can see uh, DNA pushing a uh, certificate telling the wireless LAN controller to, uh, to use uh, SFTP or secure SFTP, which port to use which username and password to use, 
and where is the path to download the certificate. Again, this is from DNA. DNA is doing all of this work. You don't have to set up another SFTP. I don't want you to have to worry about that. DNA is doing all of this on the back and then importing that certificate to secure the connectivity between DNA and the wireless SAN controller. And of course, at the end, it's also going to push um, itself as the uh, network assurance server. Any questions with wireless SAN controller so far before we move to router and switches? Not at this stage. All right, all detail. Uh, as a result, this is something that something uh, sometimes impresses people or that they t take them by surprise, is that as a result of discovering a wireless LAN controller, uh, DNA will also import all of the access points that are under that wireless LAN controller as a byproduct. So you, you could just target discovering your wireless LAN controller IP, but you will see the whole inventory populated with every access point that is registered to that wireless LAN controller as a byproduct of that discovery process, that's pretty cool. Less work for us. Let's move on. All right, so what happens on switches, right? And, and I know you guys have quite a few, so this is probably quite relevant here. So the same thing that we're gonna see across the board, pushing a trust point, pushing a certificate to secure the connectivity, uh, it's gonna push IP device tracking on every access port. Uh, before I move on to the next uh, thing that it pushes, are you guys familiar with IP device tracking? IPDT. If you are not, that's okay. I have a slide on that. I just want to make sure that you know we need to cover that or not. If you say, yeah, I'm, you know, going to be bothered with IP device tracking, I'll just skip the next slide. Otherwise, I might, no, no, I no, might no, stay no, there for no, one no, or two minutes. No, Should we cover no, that? Yeah. Can you cover that, please? Certainly. Certainly. No worries. So it, it's going to configure IP device tracking, and we're going to see what that means uh, on all access interfaces. And, and and this is an example of what the command looks like. Uh, and then, of course, it's going to enable a IP HTTP client on the loopback zero interface. So that's key. Uh, for you guys, when you're thinking about software defined access, software defined access is highly, highly dependent on a loopback zero interface. And of course, loopback zero is always a good target, or just loopback interfaces are a good target to use as your, as your management interface, especially on switches, because they don't depend uh, like an interface VLAN, they don't depend on a port being up on that VLAN for the interface status to be up. Uh, loopback interfaces are always up. So, uh, you know, if you can't get to the loopback by one route, you can always get to that loopback by another route. The loopback is not going to go down. So uh, pretty, pretty good best practice to uh, manage uh, devices. And then, of course, the SNMP communities are going to get pushed. Uh, there's only one cat, uh, gotcha with the SNMP server communities. Uh, and that is only if you have an extension to this command that allows you to type in an access list that restricts, uh, you know, to restrict who can use that uh, write-only uh, community or that read-write community at the end of this command. If you do have that, if you don't have that, no worries, right? But if you do have that, then uh, DNA, when it enters this command, is like you entering this command without that access list, right? So what's going to happen as a result of entering the same command with the same community and no access list? Well, it's going to remove that access list. So if you have with an access list there and you discover a device, maybe you want to come back and recheck that command or and push that ACL back in there. And you can use uh, also uh, network templates to do that. That is something we'll cover in our next session to avoid having to do it manually. Uh, but again, all the SNMP community matches. Yes. I have a query here. Is that HTTP mandatory there, uh, which is a requirement for a DNAC to have an access to the switches? Because some yes, of the SMP, recommendations is, are... Yes, uh, SMP, this is not optional. This gets pushed by uh, DNAC. This is not something that you will configure. This is what DNA will configure as part of the discovery process. You don't have okay. control of this. Uh, we don't have a control. Can we control? Because once you say this, we ask them to no, disable you know, HTTP and HTTPS. No, you know, you, yeah, no, and yeah, I'm making sure that the expectations are set very clear. This is what DNA is going to push, and mm. you don't have control of it. It's part of the discovery process. If you don't want it, you can disable device controllability, and DNA will not be able to manage or provide you any assurance for that device. Okay. Uh, and then so again, you can always come back and remove it if you want to remove it over the CLI or with a template so that you can mm. automate and remove it from as many devices as you want in one go. And that is something that we will cover on the next session. 
Okay, so I do want to set the expectations straight, and this will be pushed during the discovery process while the web controllability is enabled. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes. Okay, but you're saying it's mandatory for assurance. You're saying this is HTTP. I'm I'm saying that all of this is required for assurance, and 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 if you don't have one, it's not going to stop assurance, right? It's not going to stop assurance. But if you're thinking on software-defined access. Uh, you might have to begin thinking about using loopback uh, in in your infrastructure uh, if you're thinking on software defined access. Again, uh, if you don't, if you're not doing that right now, which I think is the case, don't need to worry. But as you move towards, uh, you know, all the good things that software defined access brings, uh, you know, some changes are required. Right? Uh, just 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 keep that top of mind. No. So with that, uh, any any other question, guys? Here, so I can move to IP device tracking and tell you guys about that. Any more questions? All right. I'm going to go ahead and move into IP device tracking. So with, when device controllability is enabled, uh, and this is for switches only, and this is for switches in access ports only, no trunk ports, right? Or no, no switch port, right? It's just switch ports, access ports, where DNA will go ahead and push this. So what IP device controllability does is it sends a little R probe out of that interface to make sure that the device connected is still alive, right? Now that R probe is only kind of is only going to come out that interface. It's not going to be populated out every other port like a normal R would would be um, uh, propagated. Now why do we do this? Well, basically because we you want to know at all times where the devices are, where clients are connected in your network. And if, you know, if we just leave it to the, the max age time running on a switch to time out a MAC address on a switch board because that device has gone quiet for a bit, then we would lose visibility of where those devices exist in the network as much as they're still plugged in and powered, right? So with device uh, controllability enabled and with IP device tracking, we basically allow that MAC address not to time out by, um, you know, when it's reaching, when it's getting close to the uh, expiry timer for that particular MAC address learned out of that particular access switch port, we send an R probe only out that port, expecting the device connected to reply back and refresh the MAC address um, uh, timer so that we never expire. And what that means to you is that any device connected on an access port when device controllability is enabled, and, and, and you discover those devices and IP, IP device tracking is enabled on that switch port would, would be something that you can get to at any moment from your network assurance. You can always type in the MAC address there and you can, and DNA will tell you behind which switch port, behind which switch it is connected and the reason that it is on and all the good stuff that assurance brings as a result of that, right? Any questions on IP device tracking? No. All right. It's pretty harmless, right? It's not something that I would be concerned that I've never seen a customer, uh, you know, having issues with, with this particular feature. Um, all right. So for routers, what do we do on routers? The same thing as the switches, except for IP device tracking. So what does that mean? Well, we push a certificate to secure the, the, the connectivity between DNAC and the device, uh, the IP HTTP client source, and then the SNMP community. Uh, nothing else. Any questions on routers? No. All right. Then, no, so we, 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 we don't. We don't have any um, routers discovered, unfortunately, on our existing environment. No worries. I'm hoping so, that that changes in the future, Oscar, for 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 your, uh, you know, for the sake of simplicity and, and easy of management of your network. But I leave that in your in your hands. Um, yeah, because no. it's because we run a managed service at the moment for our routers, so um, hmm. a bit hard at this stage. But hopefully, in the near future, uh, we'll be able to get that. Maybe with um, some. Uh, yeah, you know, you know what's really cool, Osman? Sometimes what? you can negotiate with your manager, with your managed services provider, to let you monitor your devices, and then you get the full visibility that Assurance provides out of that device while they continue to manage it. Now you just gain that extra visibility. That's pretty cool, but no worries. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that in your hands. Um, what I was going to say is that we're ready for the discovery results. I just realized. 
Uh, Mikey, over to you. No, I have so good. Yeah, yeah. we can see. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the that's the that's the screen that will stay. So um, basically, I click the discovery. Um, say discovery stop devices now. Probably we have to wait for a moment. How about um, since we're staying here, let me let me show you guys quickly show you guys about this. Um, probably the certificate is that right or? Yeah. Yeah. When the device yeah. is running, when the device recovery is running, and it takes a minute or two. So yeah, go for it, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, we're talking about a certificate. Uh, we'll find it too. So where we're normally setting, if you see this gear buttons on top right, we go normally go system setting. There's the settings in here. Um, there's the PKI certificate management. So probably answer your question if you have. Um, um, certificate in your enterprise, you probably have to think about how you do like a sub CA for the DNA or the stuff, but we can provide the link about a guide of how to setting up that one. That's not a big issue, but this is setting has to be in here. And the other thing about the device certificate control, by default at the moment, this is 365 days in current version. So as this one said, it might change a little bit or when the new version is coming, but um, always you can find it by yourselves just um, under here, PKI certificate management under the system set settings. Um, is that all right? You guys have any other further question about certificate? I think that's the place uh, you're looking after. No. Okay, cool. Um, all right, thank you, Mikey. Oh. Let's go to the discovery and I think it should be done by now. Uh, view all discovery. This is the one we created, right? Cool. So we find that three devices we just uh, put in. Uh, you guys can see all the IPs in here. So overall show us uh, the status, ICMP, SNMP, the COIs uh, was be connected, successful. Um, so after that, let me go where is the devices located? Uh, so it's basically under the provisioning, uh, probably, yes, here. So we have, this is three devices um, show up, five and six and seven, um, which once you finish your discovery, then um, you will find these devices there. Um, the other thing is, uh, so when those devices in here, so we, we see here, this is device hasn't been assigned to any side um, because means they will leave to the unassigned device um, category in here. So you can, you can uh, what do you need to do is remember we're talking about a hierarchy, then we can basically assign the devices to um, to the side which we, uh, which we want it. So uh, that's basically what we can do. Do we um, do we have any question regarding that or? No, at this stage, no. Yeah. Okay. So let okay. me. Take... Don't don't while while you go through that, Mikey. Guys, don't take yep. assigning a device yep. to a site lightly. It, this is mm. a requirement to be able to enable network telemetry. Network telemetry right. will not be available to a device that has not been assigned to a site. So after you discover. Like Mike, you just showed us devices are unassigned to a site, they're on your inventory and all of that got populated automatically in the background without anybody punching in anything on the DNA. Everything gets populated as part of the workflow. But uh, the devices are not assigned to a site. That's something that requires manual intervention. It's not too too much of a hustle. Like you can see, Mike is doing it right now. It's pretty, pretty straightforward, but that will be the one step that will be required before we uh, move on to enabling network telemetry. Over to you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will just uh, basically more than step by that. I got, yeah. I got a question. Does it work different for access points? So because we we're not just so much to, uh, is it telemetry, but more so assurance data, or, or we get telemetry from access points. Correct. As long as as long as the um, controller is assigned, because because that happens between the controller, doesn't it? it, it all the info Correct. DNA gets. Correct. Good. Good call, Oskan. That will be the only exception to the rule. Now, um, you, you, you might want to keep in mind that if they're not assigned to a site, then if there is any issue in that access point, we can't tell you where it's happening, right? Because we don't know where it, where, where it happened because 
we don't know where that device exists. So if it happened in, say, you know, Sydney West or Sydney East, you want to know where it happened. And DNA can tell you, but that depends on whether or not you assign it to a site. Now, assigning a device to a site doesn't push configuration to a device. That's something good for you to know. Um, and, and then, yes, wireless LAN controller is pretty much uh, all you really need to, to get to start collecting telemetry out of the access points that uh, that wireless LAN controller has, um, if that answers your question. Sure. Thank yeah. you for that. Yes, no worries. Go ahead, Mikey. Yep. No problems. Probably. Yep. That's it. It's pretty much assigned. Um, yeah, then you can see the devices disappear from on assign, then will be uh, to be at the, the building we just assign it. That's, um, that's, uh, that's pretty much for this discovery result, I believe. Um, yeah, I think um, it is any other questions so far? No? Or yes? Maybe no, Awesome. Uh, Mike, Mikey, maybe let's just jump in and talk about what gets, what type of telemetry is enabled and the net telemetry profiles real quick uh, and then hand it over and to then, you to demo that. Sure. No problems. Thank you. So uh, I just want to talk about collectors real quick because collectors is uh, where you uh, can see what uh, SNMP configurations are going to get pushed to the routers and switches. Uh, just to kind of understand what is it that DNA is going to be collecting out of those devices to provide you visibility on assurance. So you can get to there by going under system settings, data platform, and collectors. And under collectors, you'll see collectors SNMP. If you click on that one, you'll be able to see what DNA is collecting for you. The default usually work for everybody, and I don't recommend that you change them unless you are doing software-defined access, in which case, you might want to take on the three or four that are not enabled by default. Um, then, okay, now let's talk about telemetry profiles, right? So we said that assigning a device to a site is a requirement for uh, telemetry pro, uh, profiles to, to be available for that particular device. Uh, we talked about, well, I think you brought that up. There is there's three that, uh, telemetry profiles that are there by default, but if they don't work for you or if you want to just use one temporarily that has other settings, you can always create your custom profile. Now, here's something interesting for you to know. The moment you enable or you change the telemetry profile to a device under the network telemetry screen, if you are on the CLI of that device, you will see configuration push right away. So as you change the telemetry profile again, do a device from disabled to something else for routers and switches again, um, because we know wireless line controllers have it enabled by default, right? If you change it, then uh, you will see changes being pushed immediately over the CLI as a result of that. Um, the next thing is after you after you change the telemetry profile, the last thing for you would do to check on assurance because at that point you will start uh, selecting uh, telemetry for that device. Now, how does it look if you're on the CLI? Well, this is an example. Right, it might be different from platform to platform. You don't have to worry about that. DNA has uh, has all what it needs to discover what type of device it is and what a telemetry needs to be pushed. But um, yeah, what it would look like on a router that has uh, just uh, optimal enabled, so not not uh, maximal. Maximal would also enable NetFlow. Uh, what you would see is something like what you see here on the on the in front of you, which DNA is. Uh, telling the device to set DNA as the syslog server. And, and of course, you can have more than one syslog server, so it shouldn't override anything you already have there. Uh, DNA will set itself as, as, a, uh, as a syslog server to be able to collect uh, syslogs from that device as well as SNMP. Um, let's see. If you do want uh, NetFlow and, and additional application health data, uh, this is mostly supported on routers. Uh, we, we did bring it on Cat9K, a subset of the full uh, uh, portfolio of application health is available on Cat9K, uh, not, the full of, uh, not the full spectrum of uh, application visibility that is available on routers. Routers have the full spectrum available on routed interfaces. And yes, the LAN keyword 
I'm sorry, the, yeah, the LAN keyword must be part of the interface description before you apply the telemetry profile so that this gets configured under the interface. It would only get pushed whether you're running a switch or a router on an interface, well, switch or a router that is supported, of course. Uh, it would only get pushed, it would, it would only push configurations to interfaces that have the LAN keyword on it, and this is an advanced licensing um, uh, feature. So if you have the essential license on that device, if you have not activated the advanced license on that particular device, you might not see any change as much as you have the LAN keyword there. Good for you to uh, keep top of mind. So if you have the LAN keyword, you still don't see telemetry out of those switch ports or that routed interface. Uh, you might want to check on the license, make sure that the license is available and active. Okay, so you're saying, uh, I, I got a question, so you're saying uh, you yeah, need please. DNA assurance, not essentials? It, yeah, it, it's, it's advanced or essentials. Uh, I, I know you probably meant uh, advanced license when you said assurance. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah, it is. Uh, it starts with an A, that's how I remember. <laughs> okay. One is advanced and the other one is essential, so the one that okay, starts so with an A. If you, yeah, yeah, so so essential. Uh, so the DNA essentials won't do your maximal, even if you've got a nine K switch. Correct. Okay. Yeah, but Oz, you guys, yeah. you guys have got advantage all all round, yeah. Oh, sorry, no, no, yeah, yeah, advantage. That's the one. That's the word. Yeah, advantage. Um, no, we've got we 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 run majority of essential licenses um, across uh, the fleet of ninety three. So all our um, Access switches, the 9300s are all applied with the essential licensing. Only the 9500 cores at every site where we have the core switches had advantage licensing. Okay, but your APs, your APs we saw, you you got those, they're all advantage, you didn't advantage on the access points? Yeah, that, that's a different story that we still haven't got working. <laughs> you know that, that, right. that other query, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, it, and then again for the for the wireless LAN controllers, network telemetry gets enabled on all SSIDs that have the LAN keyword on the description for AeroS wireless LAN controllers. If they're AeroS based, not CAT based, CAT 9K based wireless LAN controllers, just maybe another detail to keep top of mind. Um, I want to give you all the gotchas, guys, so you don't work away. Uh, with Hang the on. long expectations. So, say that again. The, the, on a wireless LAN controller, you're saying you still need the description on the port? On the SSID. SSID. On the, the description of the SSID, you need the LAN keyword there for AeroS. AeroS obviously supports the full extent of application visibility available for wireless. For CAT 9K based wireless LAN controllers, application health. So application health, only application health, not assurance, but application health. And we're only talking about application health right now, right? Yeah. Not assurance in general. For application health from CAT 9K based wireless LAN controller, application health is not currently available. That might change in the very near future. Yeah. We're working on it. But for AeroOS, it is supported fully, fully there. Uh, and it will be enabled for SSIDs that have the LAN keyword uh, as part of the description. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That's something I didn't know. So, so we, we run the 5520s, uh, the controller. So I'd have to go into all my SSIDs and change the description to LAN, or at least in, in input it there. Correct. Before you enable network telemetry. Interesting. Yep. Okay. All right. And and I, would you like some info around that? Um, I think the the documentation here might be justified if we provide that afterwards in a quick email. Would you be yeah. interested in that? Yeah, take a note on that. That's fine. I'm happy to get some um, something on that. Okay. AeroS application visibility. All right. All right. So look forward to that. Um, there are three profiles available by default. Uh, optimal. Uh, well, let me go there. Optimal, maximal, and disabled. Disabled is the default for routers and switches. Optimal is the recommended for switches, and it only gives you this log. For routers, again, you know, for router interfaces, um, maximal is is the one recommended on routers. So you can get IP fix enabled as a result of enabling that uh, network telemetry. If this this log uh, version doesn't doesn't really uh, fit your needs. If you need to, you know, bump, bump it up a bit and make it debugging or, or lower it down a bit, 
you can always create your custom uh, telemetry profiles. And if you click on syslog, then you'll be able to select from the available syslog levels. Of course, you'll also be able to see whether or not Nestle gets enabled. And, and if you push it to a device and the device doesn't support NetSlow, no need to worry. DNA will let you know, hey, uh, you know, you push it to a device that doesn't support it, you'll get a little um, uh, red uh, flag right there. Uh, it will push the config, but it just won't push whatever it doesn't, whatever is not supported there. So good news for you, you don't need to break your head on, you know, understanding whether or not the device supports it, uh, unless you're really keen on, on getting it, or if you, if you think you're not getting it and the device should support it because it's got the right license. That, that's only the, the only case, I guess, when you would be worried about uh, one of these is showing a little flag there saying that it's not supported. With that being said, I think we're ready for the demo. Let's go ahead and see how to get it done on the DNA Center because this is the last step before we go on to full assurance uh, enabled for, for your infrastructure. And, and, and Mike, if you want to carry on with... Let's go to the telemetry. I think uh, probably some, some team members are already familiar with that. So uh, the telemetry profile, uh, basically, it's under over cube buttons. You can go to the network telemetries. So it will lead me to go back to this page. So that's the profile view. Um, this is all created by the customer, which is by us. This is the, the bottom three is the default one. Uh, you can see by default is all disabled. And then uh, you can click this R, see what is the inside. Um, I believe the interest ones let us to create a profile. And then, you know, choose, we can choose the syslog and then depending which levels we want to go, info error warning and then application visibility as it is on top. And then uh, we can click and save. That's very straightforward. Um, okay, oh, quick, was quick pause there. Yeah. Um, Application visibility, if you see that and it looks like NetFlow or IP fix in your version of code, we recently yep. changed it. I think on your version of code, it should look like application visibility, but if you ever run into a DNA running an older version of code, you might see a different a commander. But it, what, it, what it means to you is that we're going to push NetFlow. That, that's what it means, right? But we're going to mm -hmm. try to, if, of course, if it's supported. Yep. And let's click the save. Uh, then after you created profiles, basically you have to go to the side view to sign those profiles to the devices you want it. Uh, by default is global. We can see all the devices here. We can do a signing here as well. Um, this is the three devices we did um, discovery, if you guys still remember that. So five, six, and seven. You can see by default, they're signed to the disabled telemetries uh, profile. Um, quickly review that one. So it's the last one uh, in here is the default one. So basically the disable syslog uh, application visibility, which is NetFlow all the stuff. Um, if we quickly go and the pick up the one, say this, and then uh, we assign the one which is Cray, basically we'll be immediately do that. And then you see the profile names change it. Give a moment to click the info. Um, just give me a second. This log should be pushed. Yep. Well, I guess you rescue there that it tells you that uh, it didn't find any land configured on the on the actual on board, the, right? Yeah. So that that's good that you were told, and then of course if it's not supported on the device, you will also be, be told, and and that gets pushed right now immediately as we assign the telemetry profile, it gets pushed to the devices. Yep, I will give a moment. Yeah. Second. So they were doing some backgrounds, I think, on the back. It's even they're pushing up. Huh? Cool. This is basically tell you, say, you don't have a LAN description on the LAN interface, I mean, access switch. You know, with all this LAN, with all this LAN interface that you need to say on all our advantage um, license calls or whatever, it, it, can can we use DNAC to template or script it out to every interface? Yeah, uh, you, definitely we can. It's fine. You can talking about that if you want. 
So let me see if I understand. What you mean to say is you like to use DNA to push the configuration to uh, yep. the interfaces to the CLI? Yeah, well, yeah, you can definitely do that, but, you know, pushing configurations while your device is not licensed to use them might generate some uh, syntax errors, or you might not get, if you even if you don't get any syntax errors, you just might not get the expected yeah. outcome, which yeah. is, you know, to get that visibility. Oh, the, I'm, I'm talking about the, the licensed devices, so, so the ones that have the advantage licensing, which I know which ones they are. Um, I'm saying just the script, something that says here, and just a description script to push out the land. But, but yeah. it, it, is it a is it a way that it doesn't overwrite the existing descriptions rather than overriding to add? <laughs> oh, you mean to add the description? Maybe maybe we can look at what options exist um, with network templates, uh, but it might not be like a, you know like a sample template. You might need to work with with some scripting there. But uh, I I can think of of a few options to to do it there, and we're going to cover network templates. On our next session, so yeah. we look forward to that. Yeah, because it, it that uh, to be honest, it'd be, it'd be a nice enhancement or feature for DNAC to do it for you when you enable telemetry or maximal that it goes to that switch and added adds that description automatically. <laughs> it would have mm -hmm. been nice. Yeah, yeah, no, it would be it would be amazing, but but you would have to have the option to take it on and off. Right, right now we are we are only enabling where where there is explicit uh, config. Uh, but I guess, yeah, I can see where it would be nice to have it. Um, I, I'm just concerned that at that point we will have to also have an option to not enable it because some people might not want it for X, Y, Z, but reason. But yeah, yeah, good, 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 uh, good comment on. Actually, um, D DNAC 2.0 actually removes that requirement for LAN on interfaces. Which is true, but I didn't want it to bring 2.0 because it's still not yet <laughs> available. But, but yeah, yeah, no, I, no, it was more just the about, yeah, it's more than FYI that that, that requirement is is going away. So okay, yeah, well, there's heaps well, of well, enhancements well, on 2.1. Uh, heaps of enhancements. That's one of the cool ones. Uh, but I like to talk mm -hmm. about uh, current available features. So anything that you hear me say or hear Michael say that's current, right? It, you have it right now at your hands. Uh, when the time comes and these other features become available, we'll start. We'll be happy to update you that through another accelerator. No worries. What's the, what, do we have a time frame of when that would be? No, we don't. So that's no, that's yeah. another thing. That's why I don't bring it up because if I don't, if I can't give you something that you can use or you can prepare for, which I guess you need updates. If I can't, you know, I could say, well, it's next year, but. No. We are. We're taking. You can sign up for an EFT, Oz. So we, we, we. Um, there is. If you want to be part of the EFT process, then you can be on that, on that, uh, on that program that does. It's that's doing EFT at the moment. Okay. No, I'll probably wait because um. That's all. Right. I'm happy to wait. It's, it's just more around. Uh, wasting your time going and changing descriptions when we got something coming in the future, it's good to know because then I'd, I'd rather just leave it and wait. <laughs> Certainly, no worries, and and we might yeah. bring some of that on our next uh, session when we talk when we cover network templates. I think, Mikey, I think we're good to uh, yeah. wrap it up here on on the. I think you saw the, the Bef green check. Yeah, before the before I go. On. Yeah, before I go in, the, yeah, the syslog has turned green, but it used to be not because it has to, t even they say they, they deploy immediately, we have to give it some time uh, to push about the syslogs there. Uh, so that's the reason you see the red. That's why I keep him refreshing the page. But anyway, yep, yeah, that's fine. Um, so let me, do you have anything slide to present before I jump to the assurance on your guy? It's fine. No, man, I'm, I'm concerned with time, and I really want to make sure that we cover the next use case, uh, software image management. So just, just go on and, and drive right through into Assurance. This would be, mm -hmm. guys, the result of all this hard work after network telemetry is up. That would be our last step before getting full-on Assurance, and at this point, you can start enjoying Assurance right after. So, uh, yeah, it might take a minute or two for the information to get populated, um, yep. and, and Assurance to start collect, collecting network uh, information, but uh, let's just go ahead and dive into Assurance and, and enjoy the results of, of that uh, process we just saw. Go ahead.
Yep, no problems. Uh, guys, this is another demo system uh, which is in the state side. Um, so this is to have a more um, rich kinds of contents inside rather than our local environments. So we can we can see some a lot of the uh, um, uh, insurance uh, inside. That's that's why I bring up. Um, so um, basically, for assurance, this is the under of assurance tab, right? When we every times we click it here in this menu, we can see the over overall health uh, insurance. Um, back to the audience questions. Um, for typically for um, lifeblood right course and and gas deep around so far about overall health or you, you never explored these kinds of a, um, a health score, everything's like a P1, P2 cases we saw at the moment or? No, we, we, we've got a, a, a good overall result, I think, with um, the issue types and what we see. The, the, the biggest um, one we see in the P2s, they're all layer two loop symptoms, which you also have there. That's, a, that's probably yep. the biggest one, which looks like yours is as well, sort of. So. <laughs> okay. But do you, uh, I think I could, if you're familiar with them a little bit, I think I can skip those kinds of like uh, 24, you know, the hours view, you can basically on the, yeah. your time frame troubleshooting, there's the location panel. Uh, basically, it's hide, and then you can click a show. What is the site you want to go, right? And yeah. then, then will be the device view, um, overall score, and the wild client and wireless clients. And then you can go detail. Uh, but I'm not sure you guys try to say example uh, remitigation your troubleshooting times. Example like a P1, P2. Uh, you can go in here and then click. Um, then the Cisco DNA Center will give you the suggestion actions under that. This is basically on uh, the database from TAG when, when the BU tell us when they develop a DNAP. So they're based on the troubleshooting step. Basically, tech engineer will ask you to do. You can do the preview or for this typical case, we'll lose the connectivity. Um, oops. Rob want to do something or? Just deny that. So, yep. Uh, so basically, you can click a preview and then you can run. Um, click run here. Cisco DNA Center will tell you the result straight away rather than you go to the device himself. Example, the neighbor of our routing, um, underlay uh, reachability is my um, example. This is typically host in my routing table or not. And then also, you can, before you raise the tag on the last step, you basically can get this output. Once you raise the tag case, you can tell them this is already the through, um, you know, the output, which is the DNA run. Um, tech will not ask you to run again. That's one thing. Um, since you mentioned about this is a uh, layer two um, loop symptom, so you basically, I'm not sure you click that one. You can you can go in here. Two things is a uh, root cause analytics. Uh, you can run machine reasoning, so they will. They will they will run that and tell you what is the what is the result and then uh, you guys see my screen is it okay yeah okay I'll zoom in a little bit so they basically tell you which devices and then what is interface is the flapping and then uh, you you probably can you, yeah that will say view relevant activity say you can you basically tell you check the STP loops and then you also can click the run command in here to show you. Um, what is the current status for typically VLANs um, on the interface? Is a forwarding? Is it root? Is it designate or not? Um, based on the spanning tree role. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about this. Um, um, the other thing I like to go is um, generally view the network device um, helps. Um, so when we click here, this is basically show you all the overall health scores, uh, switches, access point, uh, wireless controllers, whatever you have uh, on board on the Cisco DNA Center. Um, and also they will give you um, the panel, like um, the total APs, the, the category is APs down and up, and also the top APs um, based on the client, client counts, based on the high interference. Um, yeah, um, go down and give you the more um, devices list um, 
you can filter based on the um, uh, device model and then based on the health uh, example. Um, yeah, that's pretty much. Let us, if we go uh, typically device example for this is AP, we can click in. Pop up. Yeah, probably a little bit slow um, because it's remote. Yeah, so they, they basically give you uh, what's, what's going on on the typical time. Um, this is AP, uh, the red line can tell you uh, the noise, the quality during that time, uh, the noise is quite high. The, um, that's why they show you all the red. Um, then uh, you can see what is the issue in here. Um, you, you basically can click here and then see what's going on in here. And then um, yeah, that's basically because 2. gigahertz uh, radio slot is uh, channel utilization is quite high. Um, there's the there's this all uh, suggest actions as we show on the um, before. And then also you can you can run this is show command which is we normally go to the AP to run when we when we have a troubleshooting um, before you don't need to go AP anymore you have to you can run in here see see all the um, the AP and then uh, SSID what is the uh, uh, ratios for um, uh, DB sessions at the moment um, receive an example receive the signal link strength index. Um, what else? That's the cool one is um, this is give you the detailed information uh, on that moment uh, regarding the device connectivities. Um, yep. So this is based on the client. Uh, this is RF. Here we go. Yeah, tell you uh, the radio frequency during that time. Uh, what's what's going on? Just um, just help you to do the troubleshooting. Um, the other cool stuff. Oh, uh, intelligent captures. So that's the one uh, for typically AP. We can run the intelligent captures to capture some data for our troubleshootings. Um, the other important. That's basically they scan all the um, channels and then tell us the output um, during that moment. Uh, also, I... We don't, you got a 4800 AP though, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we do have a, we don't have some, uh, I, I didn't have the full list of our AP, what do you have? Um, oh, we've got uh, 38s, we got the 38s, um, which doesn't have, um, we, we get some in intelligent captures, but uh, not what yep. we would see from the 48. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, we will do, we can provide that kind of a matrix, um, but you do have some levels. Yeah, not a full cap, um, not a full capability. Like you probably couldn't run the full um, Y shark about what's going on, but you do have some ability to see what is IF problems, for yeah. example. Mike, yeah. I'm, yep. I'm sorry, mate. I'm I'm just really concerned with time, and and seeing that they don't have 4800, okay. maybe we move on to application visibility and then yep. uh, wrap it yep. up for assurance. I really and want I, to show yeah. that it's a cool one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just so you guys know, there is a full accelerator on assurance. It's the, the two hours, three hours, this assurance, and it's targeted for operations to help them uh, already, you know, work with assurance once devices are there. Uh, and make you know make the most efficient use of, of the interface for troubleshooting with just network monitoring. If you guys are interested, just uh, let Kira know and she can schedule that to happen uh, in the future. But uh, for yeah. now, uh, I guess I guess we came to uh, assurance to move on to our next uh, use case in interest of in interest uh, in interest of time off. Okay, so you want to take it a ball back, Isman, probably. Um. Yeah, I guess I guess we, I guess we discussed uh, assurance briefly. We discussed that assurance uh, is now consuming all that telemetry and providing it uh, in a, a easy to use interface, and you get all this level of detail as a result of what we saw in the first half of this session. 
So yeah, I guess I guess unless there's any specific questions, maybe we move on and and start talking about our next use case, the last use case for today. You got about 30 minutes to cover that. Uh, is everybody okay with that? Any any last minute question? Oh, I don't have any. All right. Anybody else? All right. All right. I guess I guess we move forward, Mikey. I'm going to go ahead and um, take on the ball again. Sure. Um, all right. So, again, um, I just want to make sure we, we outline very as we use the acronym. So, uh, it's never been easier to manage your software that you use in your infrastructure until, you know, until now because, with Swim, you have options to manage your uh, virtualization network function uh, software there, your uh, software image um, maintenance updates, your SMOOs, and of course your iOS uh, and iOS XC images on, on your devices directly from uh, DNA Center. And, and you know, where last thing we want is everybody having pieces of software in their computers. Uh, like you have one version of code in yours and somebody else has a different version of code and you're asked to update a device and you use the version that you have on your laptop. Plus, there's not a secure repository for software while DNA is. And for those people who use a secure software repository, a secure server, but that's just another thing else to add, to manage, to update, to secure. You know, it, it's too cool to uh, power. It's just yeah, we, you have that already inside of DNA Center. It's a secure software repository, um, really, really easy to use. And we're going to, uh, this slide over here, I, I always say it's a lot easier than how it looks on the slide. And, and most of these steps are happening automatically for you. Let me go through them real quick so that we understand what it takes to upgrade a device. So, of course, the first thing is to import the image. Uh, there's an asterisk there because this could be something that DNA does for you. Uh, granted that you provide CCO credentials on DNA that have access to the software download page, the Cisco software download page, you can allow DNA to do that for you um, so you can use your time more productively than having to go and download software. Um, but your CCO credentials are required. Uh, we will talk about that briefly in the next slide. Now, once we have that image imported into DNA, the next thing is to assign that image to a a device family so that it becomes now available for that family to label that image as your golden image for that particular device family. What this does, right, the moment you click on uh, the star to select that image as your golden image, on the background, DNA is going to go through the inventory that was populated during the discovery. Basically, your inventory, all your devices on your inventory, DNA is going to go there and look at the devices that match that device family and find out which devices are running that version of software, which ones are not. That easy and automated is the audit happening for you on the back end. DNA lets you know which devices are out of date so you can proceed to upgrade them as well. But it just not only lets you know which ones are out of date, it runs a set of scripts and validates that those devices are suitable to get upgraded. Of course, if you know, they're under high CPU, high memory, high disk usage, and a bunch of other things, including a standing tree protocol <laughs> gets checked. There's a lot of scripts that run on the back uh, that check all of those devices to make sure that they are okay for you to move forward with an upgrade. If one of the pre-checks fails, uh, then you get notified and you won't be allowed to move forward with an upgrade until that particular issue has been uh, taken care of. Uh, but if all checks pass, then of course the device will be uh, label as outdated and ready for upgrade, and then you can proceed to uh, just upgrade that device. And we do break that down into two different steps, and you can choose for them to happen uh, at scheduled times, or you can choose for them to happen immediately. Um, and, and then one step is to push the image to the device to make sure that the image is on flash. And, you know, if you want to push an image to 300 devices overnight, you can schedule for that to happen. You come back the next day and the image is there. You're not worrying about anything because you know that all that happened overnight was the image getting pushed. And, you know, you obviously did it overnight because that's going to use some bandwidth, the same bandwidth that is going to be used at any given time to push software to a device. But if you're doing 300 devices, then, you know, multiply that iteration times, times uh, 300. Of course, DNA will do batches of 40. 
Uh, so it will push it to 40, make sure that that went fine, and then push it to the next 40, and so on and so forth. Then the then the devices are ready to get that image updated, and you can choose when that happens. Once it happens, then of course there's another set of checks that DNA runs to make sure that that update was completed successfully, and you can also check uh, the outcome of those uh, pre uh, post checks, so you can compare that to your pre check and make sure that everything is is good and ready to go. Uh, this also includes for uh, this is also the same workflow for uh, software maintenance updates, uh, but I did mention that on the previous slide. So we said uh, DNA can download the images from you uh, for you from Cisco.com, so you don't have to spend time on that. Um, now this is provided that you uh, give CCO credentials that have that option. Now it. it it is going to be the same thing that it is going to be for you to go and download the, the software from Cisco.com from the perspective of how long that normally takes. But if it takes you, I don't know, five minutes to download an image, don't expect that just because you're doing it from DNA, when you click on it, it's going to happen in, in seconds, right? It's going to happen in the same amount of time that it's going to happen if, if you had the same internet speed that DNA has at that moment to go out logging into Cisco.com and download that image. But it's just, well, we're talking about minutes. We're not talking about hours here, right? Uh, another thing that is required is for you to accept the EULA agreement on DNA. So provide your CCO credentials and accept the EULA. Uh, if you've ever downloaded any software from Cisco.com, as you are going through that process, you, you get asked to accept the terms and conditions and to accept that EULA agreement. So you don't have to go through that uh, that's another thing you have to go through uh, because you can do that once on your DNA and from there on uh, if your CCO has access to download uh, to downloading those images that you want to download uh, well if you have that take then then DNA does all of that on the background for you uh, and then you get also additional visibility when it comes to providing your CCO if you don't have your CCO provided you might see something like what you have here on the right if you do have that then DNA also downloads a pack to check the MD5 checksum of that image to secure that image even further and make sure that it's a valid Cisco image. But on top of that, you also get additional information that relates to that image. And you get this little thing here on the bottom left-hand corner, which I love. Uh, that can direct that just to the field notice for that specific version of code. So you can click on that, and instead of having to Google it, or you know, and miss one or two attempts to get to the field notices for that particular image. You can just click on this on the bottom, and it will open up a page for you. Uh, it will open up the field notice for that specific image, so that you can go ahead and check on that before you, you know, proceed to make it a golding, or before you start deploying two devices. Uh, with that being said, Jens, uh, I'm ready to hand it over to Mike for the demo. And this is a this is the um. Uh, Swin's demo. Uh, so it's basically uh, the image um, uh, repository is the sound of the design uh, image repository, um, and then uh, in the global you can import you can import an image basically um, uh, as Isban say better say like now we have a CCO account um, we can pull out the image from Cisco website directly, or if you do have some typical image you want to upload manually, you can click the import buttons, then choose the image from your local um, PC or laptop or from HTTP FTP server. Um, that's you can choose and then click the import. Um, then there was the um, for typically our cases, uh, the, the three switches with discovery is the uh, Cisco 9300. So you can see in here, um, currently we set up the uh, 16.9.4 as a, um, a golden star, which is the golden image. And then uh, we basically select um, select all of the device in a moment. And then I'll just unclick it a second. And then I'll just click again. And then that's how we choose all devices as a golden image for this one. Um, for Upgrade, um, we can click uh, update devices typically from here, or we can go um, say one of this okay. time. Sorry. Yep. Mikey, before you, well, let me know before you leave that page. I just want to make sure that we cover one of the nice details here that I don't want to skip. Are you ready to move on to the update page, or is mm. there something else pending? No, of course, until you want to show this one. 
sorry, the one thing Alrighty. I wanted to show is that is that yeah, the one thing that I wanted to show is that you can see that this one shows verified. Remember how I told you that if you provide your CCO credentials, DNA verifies that image as it downloads the image from Cisco.com. You can see that it shows verified, and you got a check mark there. If you close that real quick, Mikey, because I want to show something else. We always get, oh, well, can you recommend the, the best image for this particular platform, or what is the latest? Well, you do have um, the images uh, when you provide your CCO. Um, we, we do let you know. You can see that this on the bottom, the ones grayed out. Uh, they haven't been downloaded, but the image is there, and we let you know what is the latest on the Fuji uh, stream, which, what is the latest on the Amsterdam, Gibraltar, and all the code names there with, with what is the latest and what is the suggested as well. And all of that is being done just as a byproduct of you providing your CCO credentials and accepting the ULA. Again, these that are grayed out, you don't see the, the little uh, bin, rubbish bin on the right-hand side to delete them because they haven't been downloaded. But if you were to click them as golden image, because you have provided your CCO credentials and accepted the ULA, DNA would go to Cisco.com and download them for you in the background. And you can see um, how that download is going under show test there on the top. Uh, can you click on show task uh, show task real quick? Yeah, that's where you yeah. can see uh, what that the download is is happening and and if if it fails, why? Uh, so yeah, that was all the only thing I wanted to cover there, Mikey. Please go ahead. Yeah, no problems. Um, I almost just go to the updated one of the devices in um, in the one we had. So um, uh, again, this is a golden setting setting will be inherited from um, uh, for the site. Typically, we can see this pop up one. The same as the credentials, so they will inherit which is golden image you want. Um, yeah, then we can choose this as an updated devices, and then we can. I think this one is the lowest version so far. Yep, and then you can see if we choose the 16.9.4 as a golden image, the DNet will tell you say, yeah, this switch has to need to be upgrade update because of the uh, lowest image. If I choose this one. I just say um, software image update, and then uh, two things. One, uh, when you update image, the first one they have to distribute one. Basically, you will push the image from DNAC to basically the device you need to download that one. Um, you can choose now, or you can choose a certain time um, for the operational uh, for the change management perspective as well. Um, if you probably can distribute those images um, on um, after business hours. Not many people are there, and then you can you can choose the time. And then for our case, we just go next um, because uh, this device I believe is already download this image, so that that's you can see is very quick. Um, yeah, and then the other one will be the active. Um, so let me go confirm. Oops. Uh, you guys lose my screen, or you still can see my screen? So we can still see your screen, Mike. At least yeah, I can. Okay. Can you guys confirm? Yeah, still good. Okay, no problems. Um, I'm just uh, thinking something is blinking. I don't know. Let me double check. Okay, so basically, image um, upgrade got a kick off. Uh, I don't know why, but before you click the active, to be honest, they have a one thing similar as distribute. I don't know because of my screen is blinking. I don't, uh, I'm not sure you guys see or not. Basically, you can choose active um, now or activate on the certain time. So uh, normally when we do the BAU changes, probably uh, typically for the software upgrade, we probably want to do the night. Uh, then you can set up the time on the night. Um, you can distribute after business hours and then upgrade during the night. So you can verify once you come back on the morning, for example. Uh, then uh, you can click this process that will show you uh, what the script is running, uh, what they're doing now. Um, and then let us refresh. So this will take a moment, uh, to be honest. Uh, do you guys have any question about this uh, software image upgrade or downgrade process? Uh, no, no, no. I, I think um, I, I've run one or two. I know Gary's doing. I don't know if any of the other guys have any questions. But I'm, I'm yeah. comfortable. Yeah. 
So that, uh, so basically, you're familiar with where where you add your CCO account or all, all, all these information, right? Oh, that would be good to see, Mikey. Yeah. Can you take yeah, us um, to CCO in the ULA? Yeah, sure. So if we go uh, system setting, and then I would go setting. Uh, one thing I want to remember, Ispan was talking about device uh, end user levels agreement. Except basically, if you don't check, if you don't check this one. Uh, DNAC will pop up, so you don't worry about too much. Then that's basically how you check it. Um, the other one is the Cisco credentials. This is basically the CCO credentials. And, uh, you have to key in your username and password. Um, this is one of my colleagues' one. So um, then this is a license, um, all kinds of uh, PMP connections you need to configure in here. We don't have in in this environment. So the majority one is a CCO account you can put in here. Then um, based on your license, the Cisco DNAC will download all the uh, software image. Uh, when you check that one, there's a golden one. And I also provided you, like uh, we showed before, um, what is the suggested version? Example, this one. We probably can try to check this one, right? In the moment, I mean, they probably will download it now. I'm not sure the username and password is correct now or not. It's fine. Yeah, you, know you could, but it's going to take whatever that download takes, and, and that yeah. might be a few minutes before it becomes available, which mm. which takes me to a couple of things that I want to bring up um, uh, for you, Jen, to keep top of mind, you know, set the right expectations. Uh, and a software activation takes whatever a software activation takes. And, you know, normally we have to reload the box to activate the software, right? So when you say, I want to activate the software at this particular time, DNA is going to go in and, and do precisely that. It's going to reload the box, and it, the box should reload uh, on the version of code that's targeted. Now, if normally it takes 10 minutes or 15 minutes for that box to fully reload and, and become available, well, that's what it's going to take. It's not that because we're doing it through DNA, it's going to be done any faster, right? So things to keep in mind and that are totally expensive expected and normal operation. Now, here's another gotcha, right? Here's another gotcha. Um, if you have a device's daisy chain, and this is where it makes sense, right? If you have device's daisy chain, and let's say the root of the daisy chain is switch one, then you got to switch two out of off of that one, and, and off of switch two, you got to switch three, and switch four off of switch three, and you say you want to upgrade all four in one go, um, well, if we reload switch one, and that is the only way we can access switch two, switch three, and switch four, the upgrade might fail for switch two, switch three, and switch four. Because when we reload switch one, we would lose connectivity to the other three devices. And and that's just something to keep top of mind. Uh, why, I mean, if you did this manually, right? If you had to do this manually, and you had to upgrade all of those four switches there, the normal way you would do that is if you will upgrade switch four because you know if you ask, if you upgrade switch one, well, when you upgrade switch one and it reloads, you won't be able to actually switch two, three, and four until it reloads, and then you can go and upgrade switch uh, two, and then you know so on and so forth. So just dependency is, is something to keep top of mind. Uh, the same way you would. If you were doing it over the CLI, those same considerations apply here. It's just that because it's so easy to just click on 40 devices and say go and download the software and then upgrade right away. And this usually comes as you build more and more uh, confidence on DNA. Maybe you do one first and then you move into doing three in one window and then you do five and then you do 10. And, and of course, the more you do, in per window, the less windows you have to suffer going through because nobody wants to be on, on maintenance window if, if avoidable. So, um, you know, as you move into more and more confidence and you're doing 10, 20, 40, 50 per go, um, just keep in mind, you know, the dependencies that that if I want to do 50 in, a, in one row, well, maybe let's just make sure that there are no dependencies that I'm not going to be reloading the switch in front of this one, and I won't, and I will lose reachability to that switch behind as part of this operation. But these are just logical things that, you know, that I've seen on the field that people tend to not 
ha- have that clear and 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 close to their considerations when when they're doing upgrades here. Uh, again, not because it's something that is specific to DNA. It's just logical order, order of operations that that we might lose visibility because now we do it through, through the DNA interface and it's and it's that easy to do. Um, Mike, do you happen to have the CLI for that device, the, the console access, so that we can see the upgrade running by any chance? Did you see he bump up? That's the device. Okay, I can see that it's still booting up, right? Yeah. But the edge three. Pushed. Yeah, it looks like it reloaded. Maybe we can scroll back, depends on what your buffer is, to see it reloading on the back. Uh, can we go uh, to yeah. the provision screen just to see how it's doing? Is that update finished? Uh, yeah, sure. By the way, guys, you saw Mikey click here on update devices, and that took him to that software update page. But that software update page, or basically where you go to select which device or devices you want to update, is available to provision. And then, um, well, you can go to provision, and then you'll be you'll you'll be seeing your inventory right there. Just change the focus from inventory to software images. Can you show them real quick, Mikey, how to ch- change the focus from, from inventory to software images? Yeah, sure. Just let me close that. So, so you click okay. on provision on the top, and normally you get to inventory, and you can switch your focus to software images, and yeah. that gives you the audited, uh, you know, the audit, the audited site or the audit results for that site. Of course, if you're on the global, you can see all of the results. And then you can see on the software image, under that column, whether a device requires an upgrade, whether the upgrade is in progress, which in this case, we can see still in progress, uh, or and you can run your software upgrade from this menu. Uh, guys, another yeah. thing to, to keep top of mind um, is that, uh, yeah, well, you can, you can always track uh, over console, the progress on that uh, reload, and, and usually, you know, I see people doing this once or twice, maybe the first three or four times that they do upgrade, just as they get more and more comfortable with with the tool, um, just for the sake of, you know, I guess education and, and, and building that trust on, on the way it does it. But, you know, of course, people after five, or, or, or six windows of doing that, they get pretty tired and they start, they see that it always works and at that point, uh, you, you can start, you know, you don't really need that console access to see what's going on. We have it for the sake of, um, you know, visibility here. Now, if you are on the console because you wanna see what's happening on the, on the back, well, uh, let me tell you something. You might see the console come up and you're already on your CLI and you're checking to make sure that the upgrade is, um, fine as expected, and if you come back to DNA, the DNA might not yet show that the progress or the process is completed. So what I'm saying here is after the software upgrade is completed, not immediately is DNA going to show that the progress is completed, and why? Well, because there is a uh, introduced artificial time in DNA after a device finished reloading, that DNA is going to wait before it runs its post check. And we're not talking about hours. So we're talking about, you know, one or two minutes, or maybe five hops, where it's, the DNA is going to wait after the device reloads before it starts to run the post checks. And until all of those post checks are passed, then DNA changes the status on the graphical user interface. So I just don't want you to be alarmed if you're on the console and you see it up and running and everybody's happy and then you come back to DNA and, and DNA still not showing that device as the upgrade com- completed. Just to set expectations right. Uh, is that clear? Any concerns there? Hey Mike, I have a question regarding this area here. Yes, please. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, so I have done a number of upgrades using the DNA here. Um, but one thing that I didn't notice is that after you have um, activated the image, is there any way you can change that in a later time? Uh, when you say change, what, what is it that you want to change? 
um, postpone it, probably you have already a set um, to activate it on a particular time, but then you have um, yeah. uh, you, you wanted to do it uh, the next day after, probably like that. Yeah, yeah. Is that an option? Let's say that, yeah, let's say you just want to you just want to cancel the task, right? The, the activation of the image, the pushing of the image is called a task, and it's a separate task than the activation of the image. The images, the activation of the image is considered a separate task, and both of these, one or the other, you you can cancel. If you if you cancel the That's deployment right. of the image, that will cancel the activation of the image. But you will okay. go under uh, task. Um, Mike, okay. I think that's on the upper right-hand corner to see the tasks yeah. that are currently being run at the top on the right-hand corner, right next to about. Yes. Yeah. Right there. So you can yeah, see the schedule don't. task here, and and then from here you can select it and cancel it, right? In our case, there is nothing to cancel because we're already pushing. We're going yeah. all the way. Yeah, right. yeah. If the if the activation was scheduled for later this afternoon, maybe I could go and choose it here and say, you know, yeah, I want to I want to cancel this task or abort this task, right? Um, okay. But in our case, the task is already executed, so you you cannot stop them once they are being executed. If if, if that makes sense, it's only right. before they start to be executed. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, Gary. And, and and I've seen people do it. I've seen people, you know, they they, they choose. Okay, let's 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 uh, push the image, and let's push it, you know, by the end of the week, and then next week on the weekend we are going to activate it. And something happened between, you know, the pushing the image to the devices, and, and between that date and the date that you actually want those images activated. So next weekend, and 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 then you know maybe some, that's something that happened is postponing that upgrade. So. They can go and kill the tasks that would activate the image, but if the first one already happened, you know the distribution, then and that already happened, you cannot cancel that one. But but the reload is is, is usually the one that is critical here, not so much the pushing of of the images to the infrastructure here, right? Uh, unless you're doing it on production hours, <laughs> which which you know might might take a chunk of the bandwidth. But but other than that, um, yeah, not, not critical. I think the upgrade is finished. So yep. uh, I think we, we already saw the, the upgrade happening on the back. And at this point, all the post-check uh, tests have been executed and successful. Thus, the image is now showing the, the new software image here. The device has been upgraded. You want to go to the CLI, Mike can show us real quick before we come to the top of the hour? Mm -hmm. So uh, let me move down. So that's basically um, the one we haven't been down. Can you show? Can you show versions to see the uptime on that device? Yep. Uh, I have to remember. Okay. Hopefully, it's doing. Cool. Uh, Hi guys, it's Oz. Um, I'm sorry, I have to jump off now. Um, uh, I got another meeting at three o'clock. No, it's all yep. good, Oz. I hope no you got a lot of value out of today's session, and, and we hope to have you on our next session where we're going to be talking about templates and plug and play. No, no, 100%. 100%. I'll see you guys at the next session. Sure. And, and I'll get back to you on those findings that we have for homework, mate. So look, look forward to that email. No worries. Thank you, mate. Good luck in your meeting. Cheers. Have a good Thank day. Thank you. Bye. 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 For, for all yep. those of you who remain on the, on the call, um, I guess. Oz is not missing out on, on much because this was truly the end of it. We just saw an update.